provision of adult education and training in Canada is achieved through a wide spectrum of agencies, organizations, and public and private institutions. School boards, colleges, universities, vocational centers, CGEPs, adult learning centers, community, nonprofit, volunteer groups, employers, unions, associations, and private companies all provide programs and services for adults. In Canada, the provincial government has constitutional responsibility for adult education. However, the federal government has come to provide support for various kinds of short-term job training, as well as certain forms of education, particularly through student loans and the provision of research and information. In practice, therefore, adult education is supported by a mixture of provincial and federal funds. Because adult education is primarily a provincial responsibility, there are huge differences in policy and provision of adult education across Canada. A recent CMEC report noted that in no province does a single government organization have overall responsibility for adult education. In most provinces, this responsibility is split between several ministries overseeing education, labor, and or human resources development programs. This means that there are effectively 13 different systems of adult education to understand, rather than one, plus a federal system. The goal of this video is to look at how adult education providers are classified and to offer some topologies to help with the classification. During this video, please reflect on the following analysis questions. Who is responsible for the provision of adult education in Canada? In what ways are typologies useful for classifying adult education providers? How do Werner and Booth, Schroeder, Darkenwald and Merriam, Kowalski and Apps classify adult education providers? And what are the major similarities and differences between these topologies? The landscape of organizations and institutions that offer adult education programs and courses in Canada is so diverse that there is not a comprehensive and widely accepted classification system for it. Belanger and Terman characterized Canada's adult education system as being provided by a bewildering array of sponsors. Most classification schemes reflect a range with regard to the centrality of the adult education mission. At one end are institutions exclusively devoted to adult education, and at the other end are institutions in which adult education may be used to underscore another mission entirely. Werner and Booth propose a simple topology consisting of 1. Institutions of which adult education is the primary function, 2. Institutions for which adult education is an extension of the primary function, such as school systems and libraries, and three, institutions for which adult education is a means of achieving another primary function, such as business and industry, the armed forces, and health and welfare agencies. Schroeder divides institutions and agencies into the following four types. Type 1 agencies are established to serve the educational needs of adults. They include proprietary schools and independent residential centers. It is difficult to cite examples of type 1 agencies which have adult education as the central function. Canada's Frontier College and the English Workers' Education Association are a few examples. But in general, few agencies have adult education as the central function. In most instances, adult education is a secondary, allied, or subordinate function, which is juxtaposed against the primary purpose of the agency. Type 2 agencies are established to serve the educational needs of youth, but also serve adults as a secondary function. These agencies include institutions of higher education and public schools with adult evening or day programs. Type 3 agencies are established to serve both educational and non-educational needs of the community. They include libraries, museums, and health and welfare agencies. Type 4 agencies are established to serve the needs of special groups, often using adult education as the primary method of service. Examples of this type of agency include adult education that takes place in religious institutions, correctional facilities, and in government, business, and industry. Types 1 and 2 agencies are usually recognized as adult education agencies, whereas type 3 and 4 agencies, which include museums, hospitals, trade unions, and prisons, are rarely seen to be adult education agencies. Adult education occurs within them, but few people look at a hospital or a union hall and think of it as an educational institution. Schroeder also thought agencies of the first three types tend to be oriented towards people, whereas type 4 are more occupied with the organization. Darkenwald and Merriam identified four types of adult education providers. The first one is independent adult education organizations. These organizations exist for the primary purpose of providing learning opportunities specifically for adults. They can be community-based, for example, learning exchanges and grassroots organizations, 
or they can be private, such as literacy groups and proprietary schools or residential centers. The second one is educational institutions, and this category includes educational institutions such as public schools and post-secondary institutions, which have the primary mission of serving youth. The third is quasi-educational organizations, and whether public or private, these organizations consider the education of the public to be an integral part of their mission, and they view education as an allied function of their primary mission. This category includes cultural organizations such as libraries, museums, and the mass media, and community organizations such as service clubs, religious and civic organizations. The fourth is non-educational organizations, and these are similar to quasi-educational institutions and that their primary mission is not educational. The difference is that rather than viewing educational clearly as an allied function, non-educational organizations consider it a means to some other end. Educational opportunities are mostly geared to the organization's employees instead of the public. For example, business and industry exist to make a profit. To the extent to which education can increase profits, these institutions support it. Government agencies at the local, provincial, and federal levels are also engaged in extensive training and education, as are the armed forces, unions, and correctional institutions. Kowalski suggests a six-part topology for classifying adult education providers. Type A includes institutions that provide adult education as an exclusive function. Type B includes institutions such as schools and other educational institutions that offer adult education as a secondary function. Type C institutions are community service agencies that provide education as a secondary function, such as libraries, museums, clinics, hospitals, and public television. Type D institutions are private organizations that offer adult education as a secondary function including business and industry. Type E institutions are voluntary organizations and groups that provide adult education as a secondary function, such as the YMCA, churches, professional organizations, and unions. Type F institutions are government agencies that provide adult education as a secondary function. Apps suggest a typology based on funding. The first is tax-supported, and sponsors include post-secondary institutions, cooperative extensions, libraries and museums, the armed forces, prisons, or any agency that gets some or all of its funding from taxes. Nonprofit agencies are self-supporting and include religious institutions, community-based agencies, service clubs, and professional organizations. For-profit include proprietary schools, private consultants, and business and industrial firms that offer training designated to increase profits. And the last, non-organized, encompass learning opportunities found in informal activities and environments such as the mass media, travel, work, and family settings and recreational pursuits. These various topologies provide a framework that attempts to reduce the range of diversity so that an analysis of adult education providers becomes less cumbersome. No doubt there are institutions that may not fit neatly into any one given category. There is also the realization that collaborative efforts are becoming more common. As the demand for services continues to grow, and as resources become more limited, Cooperative ventures among organizations are becoming an operational necessity. Thus, an adult education program may be the product of several different types of organizations. Please reflect on the following synthesis questions. Is there a need to classify adult education providers? Which topology for classifying adult education providers resonates with you the most and why? What do the typologies have in common and where do they differ? And can you think of an adult education provider that is not captured by the proposed topologies?